Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. This week's video is sponsored by PCBWay, but more on PCBWay later. First up this week is what I hope is the finale of the Retro Castle saga. Retro Castle is the AliExpress store that was selling a Famicom replacement motherboard that appeared to have the NES RGB kind of integrated into it. Well, I think in the last video, I mentioned that somebody in one of my YouTube comments mentioned that the Retro Castle Famicom board was original. It did not share any components or firmware for that matter with the NES RGB. Now I got another comment saying that the Retro Castle Famicom board has been removed and there's some kind of legal trouble with it. If I'm being honest, I probably never should have talked about the story. It just seems like a whole lot of speculation. I'm not actually talking with this Retro Castle seller at all. But at least based off of this one report, it looks like there was some legal issues with that Famicom board from Retro Castle. Next, it looks like Greg from LaserBear is designing 3D printable GameCube jewels. And here they are actually fitted into the console. It looks like it has these kind of cool 3D printed clips here. I wonder if there's a part that's going to to go over the top of it just to kind of make it more seamless because you can see the clips here and I just was curious if that was the final design. But then I noticed in a comment that Greg had already created either a new version or maybe this is a second piece that goes on top of that clip piece but this is a morph ball version using a multi-material unit to get the different colors of 3D printed filament. Even though this is such a simple piece, I think it's a great idea to give people the ability to customize their game cubes and maybe show off their favorite games. There's no word if Greg is gonna have multiple different types for sale. I'm sure they will, different colors, and maybe even featuring different games on the Jewel. I think I may have mentioned this project already, but HDR has created these CNC aluminum Game Boy cart shells. The coolest part is that HDR has uploaded the files to the PCBWay kind of web store. So if you want to create one of these, it's sort of baked in here where you can kind of order one yourself without having to upload files and change any of the settings. Well, that's not true actually. You do need to customize some of the ordering options when you do order it, but it sounds like you can get it bead blasted and anodized and I'm sure you probably can choose the color that you want it anodized but it's nice to be able to add it to your cart choose the color that you want and then PCB way will mill it and then send it to you I'm sure that these are not gonna be cheap but they look really nice so if you have your favorite game maybe you can treat them to one of these CNC Game Boy cart shells. Next up, Voltar has a couple of Wii U NAND tools. He's been looking into that issue that has been plaguing some Wii U's, I guess, bricking themselves if they've been sitting for too long without being powered up. I don't really have a lot of information about that. However, I do wanna talk about the tools that Voltar has created. So this first one is called the NAND aid. And from what I can gather, this is a way to basically replace the NAND in a Wii U with an SD card. So if you're having problems with the NAND for your, your Wii U, you can just, I guess, bypass it completely with this tool so that you can just use an SD card for the NAND. I do like that it's a very compact design and it fits neatly onto the Wii U board so you don't have to run any wires or anything. There's nice solder pads. So this looks like a pretty cool tool for people trying to replace their Wii U NAND. The other tool that he's created is the SD tool. I think this is a way for you to manually dump what's on a NAND uh, chip by soldering it directly to this SD tool. And then you can plug this SD tool into an SD card reader. So that's pretty interesting. I don't know if this is expected to be soldered inside of the Wii U, but I suppose if this is your like only hope of capturing stuff from a NAND chip, then I think this would be pretty universal too and not just working on Wii U's. And both of these tools will be open source, so hopefully they'll be pretty inexpensive for you to get and to use. Next up are these Smoke Black NES shells. I think I might've talked about this already, but Retro Game Restore is really just trying to judge if people are gonna be interested in this or not. They posted this about a week ago and they were hoping for the post to get 300 likes. Right now it's sitting at 150 likes. I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are about all of their transparent shells. I know for me personally, I like the look of the original colors. That is one of the reasons I'm not like dying to swap over every single console that I have to these clear shells. I think if I really wanted to preserve a particular console, but just get a nicer looking shell or a clear shell or whatever, by all means, you should get the transparent shells. But there's just something about the original cases. I don't know, the original look is what I like. I like the original colors and I don't really wanna change that. With that being said, these look really awesome. I think these are all renders, but 
it's a very realistic render and they have these like Star Wars kind of logos all over them. I'm still hoping to get a transparent shell to show off my open Tendo build. That's kind of like the only circumstance where I think you would want a really transparent shell is to show off what's inside of your case. And if it's just the old boring original pieces, then I don't really know if people are gonna want to swap to all transparent shells for things. Let me know your thoughts on transparent shells in the comments below. I know pretty much less than zero about the PC effects other than I think it's a Japanese computer. But anyways, I still wanted to talk about this post from Humble Bazooka just in case you are a PC effects fan and this applies to you still. This is the FX NV BMP. I guess there was this FX BMP, which was an external a uh, storage card, I guess, for the PCFX that was battery powered. And as you can imagine, since that's battery powered and the batteries die, then you're probably gonna lose your saves. I think it must be saves, which is gonna go on this card. But this Humble Bazooka version is non-volatile memory, meaning if the battery dies, the storage, the save files are still gonna be on there. I do have to say that I really like the colors involved with this memory card. I mean, it just looks really cool. If you're a PCFX fan and you're interested in something like this, then you can head over to Stone Age Gamer where they have an interest check going already for this. Next up is a project from Mr. Add-ons that shockingly isn't a Mr. Add-on. This is the Dreamcast slash VM slash keyboard adapter for the Sega Naomi. Now the Naomi, I believe, was arcade hardware based off of the Sega Dreamcast. And this Dreamcast controller adapter allows you to use Dreamcast controllers with the Naomi hardware. I think this is a pretty cool idea, especially if you're interested in consoleizing the Naomi hardware. And I think also the DC Digital, the HDMI mod for the Sega Dreamcast is compatible. The newer versions are compatible with Naomi hardware, I think. I guess that'd be a great way to create a consoleizer for the Naomi is use this for controller inputs and then the HDMI port from the DC Digital would give you a good way to connect this to a TV. This is still in progress with an ETA of May of this year. Skims were reached out to me on Discord and mentioned that they have a bunch of GameCube related GitHub projects in their GitHub. So let's check out what they've got. There's actually a bunch of replacement PCB projects here. There's a Game Boy Pocket one, a couple of Game Boy Color ones, replacement Game Boy Color in pocket form format PCB. So that's like making a Game Boy Pocket into a Game Boy Color. One thing I thought was neat was this Game Boy Color Lite PCB actually is a fully working Game Boy Color, but with some of the components removed, the ones that were necessary for the OEM screen. But since a lot of people are using LED screens with their Game Boys, this board will actually remove the components required for the stock screen so that you can just use an aftermarket screen instead. I think that's a really good idea, especially if you're looking to hand populate these boards instead of having them built for you. Less components obviously is less work for you to do in the end. Here's the one that I really like. This is the Game Boy Color in Game Boy Pocket format because the Game Boy Pocket was the smallest of those smaller Game Boys. I don't know, one of these days I'm gonna have to tackle one of these projects because I really like the look of the Game Boy Pocket. It's really small and sleek, but I would rather have the more advanced or I guess Game Boy Color in the Game Boy Pocket form factor. Before we get into the big story this week, I wanna thank the sponsor of this week's video, PCBWay. If you're just getting into retro console modding, then you'll quickly find out how many different projects require custom PCBs. That's where PCBWay comes in. They're a custom PCB manufacturer, so all you have to do is send them the Gerber files and they'll manufacture the boards for you and then send them to you in the mail. They've got 3D printing services as well so if you're looking to 3D print a piece for a custom mod then they've got you covered. They even have CNC machining and injection molding services if you are a mod developer and you're looking to create a professional product. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. You can find out more by visiting the link in the video description. I guess the theme of this week's video is replacement Game Boy PCBs because the big story this week is a Game Boy Advance replacement PCB. Natalie the Nerd on Twitter posted these pictures of this custom Game Boy Advance PCBs that they've designed. They reverse engineered the Game Boy Advance board much like Red Herring reverse engineered the NES for the Open Tendo. I think this is a really awesome project. However, I don't know if these are gonna be open source. They didn't mention if they were going to share the source or anything, but you know, I really hope that they either do or they make a bunch of these and sell them to people because I think that there is a market for replacement Game Boy Advance PCBs. I don't think we've seen one that is either open source 
or available or both of those things. So while I don't have a lot of information about this project, I hope it could be both of those things, open source as well as available for people to buy. With that being said, since these are replacement PCBs, you do need to desolder things from your original Game Boy Advance motherboard, like the CPU here and the other chips, you'd have to transplant some of them from the original board to the new board. The real reason this is the big story this week is because I wanted to cheer up Red Herring. Apparently Red Herring is also working on reverse engineering the Game Boy Advance PCB. And since this came out first, came out, but I, I don't see the source yet. And now Red Herring's not sure if he's gonna continue his project at all. But either way, just throw Red Herring some love either here in the comments or on Twitter and make him feel a little bit better about his efforts for reverse engineering a lot of these older boards. Having a reverse engineering effort that's as close as possible to the original is very valuable, especially as these consoles get older, it's gonna be very important that we have replacements, either just for reference, or if people just want to give new life to an old console by using replacement PCBs. That's it for this week, but check out this video if you want a first look at the M.2 loader for the GameCube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.